In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 20 simple ideas to help you save money. And I know that there are tons of videos here on YouTube that talk about that and approach it from the angle of increasing your income, budgeting, investing, side hustles. Those things are all great and very important, but that is not what this video is about. This video is about 20 simple, tangible, practical things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to help you save money in every aspect of your life. So let's get into it. The first tip I'm about to share is something that I know is not unique and you've probably heard it hundreds if not thousands of times by now, but it's really important and it is to make your food and your coffee at home. I think people drastically underestimate just how much markup there really is on food and drinks at restaurants. I think the assumption is typically that you're spending two or three times more money to eat out than to eat at home, but in reality it's often 10 or 20 or even 30 times more expensive, which really adds up very quickly. Tip number two is to just drink water. and. Fine, coffee will count as water too. It's mostly water, at least if you make it at home anyways. But buying things like soda and juices and smoothies are so expensive and really unnecessary. They're often loaded full of sugars and dyes and things that your bodies don't really need. So just drink water, it's free. It comes from a tap. If you wanna be extra fancy, you can get yourself a filter, but there's really no need to be spending two or three or even $5 every time you have a drink. And honestly, your body will be way better off for it. And on the topic of food, the next tip that will save you quite a bit of money is to go plant-based. I wanna be very clear though that saving money was not the reason I went vegan. There's a whole bunch of other reasons that you should. With that said, it has been a nice little perk. There's definitely a stigma attached to plant-based and vegan diets and people claim that they're more expensive and it's just not true. Realistically, it just doesn't check out. For sure, a lot of the processed foods can be a little bit overpriced, but the same could be said about non-vegan processed foods. As it turns out, the foods that are staples of plant-based diets are not only some of the healthiest, but some of the cheapest foods on the planet. We're talking beans, rice, potatoes, grains, legumes, fresh fruits and vegetables. Those things are best for us, best for the planet, best for the animals, and best for your pocketbook as well. It's always rubbed me the wrong way when people say that veganism is a privilege of the rich or that it's an expensive diet to maintain, and then they go and they spend $20 on a steak. And for the final grocery related tip, tip number four is to buy the store brand or no name brand when you grocery shop. There's definitely some notable exceptions where the name brand product is significantly better, but in the vast majority of cases, the store brand is exactly the same product as the name brand, just with a different label on it, down to the point of made in the same factory with the same recipe, just marketed differently. Wherever it makes sense, go ahead and buy the store brand, buy the no name, buy the off brand. It's the exact same thing. Tip number five is to use what I call the seven day rule when it comes to shopping. We've all heard of the 24 hour rule where you look at something, you think about it for 24 hours and then you only buy it if you still want it the next day. But I've actually taken that rule and stretched it out to a full week. I find that that dopamine rush you get when you think about buying something new is often still present the next day. And so by adding a little bit more time and adding a little bit more friction between the idea and the actual purchase, it will allow you to mull it over a little bit longer. And I find that in most cases, by the end of the week, I've completely forgotten about the item, or even if I haven't forgotten, I've completely lost interest and it saves me a ton of money. The next tip is to make sure to always search for promo codes or rebates or cash back opportunities or any discount you can find when you actually are making an online purchase. So no matter what I'm buying, no matter what website I'm on, before I submit a purchase, I will always take a second, hop over to Google, type in the name of the store and the phrase promo code. And more often than not, I can find myself a discount for maybe 10% off or free shipping. I also use a browser extension called Honey. Um, this is not sponsored by the way, but if Honey wants to sponsor me, they're welcome to do so. It's a free browser extension that when you're on that checkout page on a website, Honey will automatically search for you and let you know if there's any promo codes that will work for your purchase. Uh, in addition to all of that, I also use a website called Rakuten, which I will link to in the description box down below. If you sign up through my link, you'll actually get a few dollars just for signing up and making your first purchase. It's a totally free website and it gives you cash back on whatever you're buying from the vast majority of well-known retailers. So you basically just go onto Rakuten. If you're searching on, let's say Home Depot, you go to Home Depot through Rakuten, takes you to the website, boom, you're good to go. And I think it's every quarter or maybe it's every six months they send you a check in the mail for whatever amount of cash back you've accumulated. So make sure that you're always searching for a discount or a promo code. You won't always find something, but more often than not, save at least a couple bucks. Tip number seven is to buy used whenever you can, whenever it makes sense to at least. I've made a whole video about this in the past, which I will link to in the cards up above and in the description box down below, but there are so many perks to buying used. The most obvious one, of course, is to save money. It also helps to reduce our environmental impact. But when you buy used, not only are you saving a couple bucks right off the top, but you're actually retaining the value of the item that you're buying so much better. Just as an example, if I was to buy a camera, like the one I'm using right now, if I was to buy this camera brand new, it would cost me like $1,200 plus tax. Whereas on the used market, it sells for about $900. So if I went and I bought this camera for $900 and I used it for six months or I used it for a year and I decided that I didn't want it anymore, I could then resell it for probably still the $900 that I paid for it. So buying used saves you tons of money on the front end, but it also allows you to recoup 
the majority of your value later on when you no longer have a use for that item yourself and you can resell it a second time. Tip number eight is another one that I've talked about in depth on this channel before, and it's about subscription services and my dislike for them. Uh, I've talked openly about how I don't have subscriptions to Netflix or Spotify or Amazon Prime or Audible or anything like that. I'm personally not a fan of the reoccurring payment model, and I'm also just not a big fan of the content that the majority of them provide. I don't find value in it personally, but sometimes there is something that I wanna watch on Netflix or something to that degree. And so what I will do is I will subscribe to the service for one month. I will cancel the subscription immediately. So I have a month to watch the show I wanna watch or to do whatever it is I wanna do. And then it's over and I'm not stuck in this endless loop of paying for things that I don't want or spending my time and attention on things I don't wanna spend my time and attention on. And I'd recommend that you do the same. First of all, if there's any services that you are subscribed to that you don't actively use, go ahead and cancel them. Like pause this video and cancel them right now because that eight or 10 or $20 a month adds up so quickly if you keep forgetting about it. So just get rid of them. And if there's something that you generally kind of like, but don't use enough, feel free to subscribe for it for a month or two at a time when you feel like you want to, and then just cut it when you're done. The next tip is to utilize your local library and other free resources to borrow or trade for or acquire things for free that you might otherwise pay for. Libraries obviously have books and things like movies and CDs. I think that those are all pretty common knowledge, but what people don't realize is that a lot of them have things like cameras and iPads and laptops and various electronic devices. So if you were shooting a video, for example, and you didn't have the right camera or the right lens, you might actually be able to borrow it for the week from your library for free, rather than going and spending hundreds of dollars on something that you're only gonna use for a short period of time. Additionally, Facebook can be a wonderful resource for finding groups in your community where people give away and borrow and trade books and puzzles and house plants and tools and all sorts of other good things that you may only want to use for a short period of time and that you don't actually want to invest a lot of money in. And speaking of utilizing the resources in your community, I think another really important tip is to network with your neighbors. The people you live around can provide you so much value both on a personal fulfillment level and also on a money saving level. For example, maybe you own a lawnmower and maybe your next door neighbor owns a snowblower. And if that's the case, then maybe you don't both need to own both items, which are expensive and take up a lot of room. Maybe you can share, maybe you can trade, maybe you can cut his grass and he can blow your snow. Maybe you can borrow his snowblower and he can borrow your lawnmower sort something out. But if you converse and communicate with your neighbors and the community around you, you have lots of opportunities to save yourself a lot of hassle and a lot of money in the long run. The next tip that I'm about to share is one that can actually save you quite a bit of money over the course of a year. And that is to do your laundry and run your dishwasher and do all those sorts of things on off peak time. I don't know if this is unique to Ontario or if this is something that exists everywhere, but our electrical utility company has what they consider to be on peak and off peak hours. And so it's basically times of the day or days during the week where it is more or less expensive to use electricity. Here it winds up being quite a bit cheaper to use electricity late in the evening as well as on the weekends. So I try to wait until the weekend to do my laundry and to run my dishwasher overnight so I wake up in the morning with clean dishes but I'm not paying more than I need to for my utility bills. Tip number 12 is to move down one level in your internet service. I think a lot of us automatically assume that we need the fastest best internet available and the truth is that we probably don't. Of course you don't want the cheapest slowest internet available but I would be almost willing to guarantee that if you called your internet provider and you move down just one level from wherever you're at you'll save yourself 10 or 20 dollars a month and you probably won't even notice a significant difference in the speeds. And tip number 13 is to look into smaller or discount providers for your phone and internet service. If you're with one of the big companies, you might be surprised how much you're being gouged. I know here in Canada, we have four big companies, Rogers, Telus, Bell, and Fido, and their plans are extremely expensive. And the funny thing is that the majority of them own smaller sister companies that run on the exact same network and provide the exact same service and can be as much as 30% less expensive. The next tip might be a bit of a controversial one. So here comes the hot take. Avoid rideshare services. Services like Uber and Lyft are so overpriced. If you drive, if you have a car and you have a license, use your car. You're paying for it anyways. You're paying for the insurance. You're paying for the monthly maintenance. You're paying for all that stuff. Just make use of it. And if you don't, whenever possible, lean on public transit because Uber and Lyft are so overpriced and they price gouge you even worse on the times when you need them the most. So try your best to avoid them whenever possible. And in that same line of thought, I would highly recommend avoiding food delivery apps. Things like Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes are so overpriced. Not only are you obviously paying for a service fee to use the app and you're paying for a delivery fee, and of course you have to tip your driver, but the prices that are listed in the apps themselves from the restaurants are significantly marked up because those apps take a huge chunk of the profits from the restaurants. They just mark up the prices to accommodate that. So the $10 pizza down the road is gonna be listed for 13 or $14 on the app and then the fees and then the delivery and then the tip and now you've paid probably double if not more for the exact same item just because of the convenience of using an app which in my opinion is certainly not worth it. 
Tip number 16 is to switch to a no fee banking account. It absolutely blows my mind that we're here in 2022 and there are still people paying service fees to use their bank. Banks are not your friend. I wanna make that very, very clear here. Banks need you a lot more than you need them. Technically speaking, you could keep all of your money in a mattress in your house and there's not a damn thing that anybody could do about it. But when you put your money into bank accounts, banks use that money to loan out to others and earn interest. And that's how they make billions with a B, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars every year. And so by you putting your money into a bank account, you are doing them a favor. They are not doing you a favor. So the idea that they are going to charge you service fees to access your money, to do things like withdraw or use your debit card or deposit or send an e-transfer is absolutely mind blowing to me. It's the biggest scam of the 21st century in my personal opinion. And it's completely avoidable because there are so many banks now that offer no fee accounts that don't charge you to send an e-transfer, don't charge you to access your own money. If you are paying a monthly fee just to maintain an account, if you're paying $3 every time you make a withdrawal, please, please switch to a no fee bank account. Screw those guys, honestly. The next tip to save money, which is a really important one, is to brush up on your math and calculation skills. I think unfortunately a lot of people get really ripped off and price gouged because they're not strong at math and they assume when they're shopping that they're getting a good deal on something because they're buying at a discount store or they're buying in bulk and that's not necessarily true. I know for example here in Canada we have a store called Bulk Barn which is kind of like where we go and buy bulk things and people assume that it's a better deal and generally they're very very expensive. If you calculate the cost of things like nuts and seeds and flour and all sorts of other dry goods on a cost per volume or a cost per weight basis Typically speaking, that place is more expensive and people just don't realize it. So learn to calculate how much you're paying per gram of flour. Learn to calculate how much you're paying per gram of spices. Learn how to calculate how much you're paying per sheet of paper towel and make sure you're actually getting the deal you think you're getting. Tip number 18 is a pretty straightforward one and it is that if you drink and if you smoke, quit drinking and quit smoking, or at the very least reduce those things if you can. Obviously those habits are very destructive to your health. I'm sure you know that, I'm not here to lecture you, but they're also incredibly expensive. And so the less you can do them, if you can cut them out of your life, you're gonna be way better off for it in many ways. Tip number 19 is to learn to do things yourself. And I think that this is such an important skill to have, the confidence and the desire to learn because you would be surprised how simplistic things can be even when they seem very complicated. And you'd be shocked how many things you could probably do on your own that you might otherwise outsource or pay someone else to do for you. I'm talking anything from cooking a new meal to small home repairs to even grooming your dog. We're in the age of information and we have so much information available to us for free on the internet at all times. I like to say that I'm a graduate of YouTube University in the sense that if there's anything that I've ever needed to know how to do, I just look online, I watch a video or two of someone else doing it, and at the very least, I will take a crack at it. And sometimes, sure, I'm out of my league, and at that point, you gotta do what you gotta do, and you gotta hire a professional, but a lot of the times, you can fix things on your own, you can do things for yourself, and you can save yourself so much money. And it's really good for your confidence, too. And finally, tip number 20 is to avoid single use products. Obviously there is a huge environmental aspect to this as well, but from a financial perspective, I think people underestimate what a waste of money single use items really are. Just as an example, if you were to invest in a nice set of glass Tupperware for your kitchen, you might spend 20 or $30 and that thing is gonna last you forever. A box of Ziploc baggies, on the other hand, might only cost $5, but you're gonna use them and you're gonna throw them out. And before you know it, you're gonna use up the entire box and you're gonna buy another box and another box and another box. And in just a few months time, you've now spent more money on those Ziploc bags than you would have on a really good quality set of kitchenware to begin with. So Ziploc baggies are just one thing, but that really applies to pretty much anything. Single use products, bad for the environment, bad for your wallet, avoid them. Anyways, that's it. That's my list. Those are the 20 simple, practical, tangible things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to help save money and hopefully things that you can implement into your life as well. But if you think I've missed anything or if you have any other little tips or tricks that I didn't mention, by all means, drop me a comment down below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video at all, please go ahead and hit the like button. I really appreciate you guys watching as always. If you haven't done so yet, please also consider subscribing. I mentioned last time I am gonna be doing a Q&A video very, very soon um, to celebrate 500 subscribers. So you can drop me a comment down below and ask me anything you'd like. You can also shoot me a message over on Instagram. And if you don't follow me there, by all means follow me. It's at according to Nicole with little underscores between each word. I'll put the handle right here for you. And shoot me a question. Anything you wanna know, AMA, I'm gonna make a video and I will address all of your questions to the best of my ability. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you next time.